Hey guys, this is Angela from A Chaotic Life of a Planner. Today I'm going to be putting together my April budget pages. I cannot stinking believe that it is almost April. Time has just flown by, you guys. So you guys know if you've watched my previous videos that I use the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner in the 7x9 size. I have the neutral version. So I'm going to start by showing you some of my March stuff. Well, first, let me back up a little bit. So the first half of March, maybe even the first three weeks of March, was absolutely great. Like, we were on track, we were on budget, you know, everything was fine. Then, if you watched my plan with me, <clears throat> excuse me, for this week, you'll see that we had a little snafu. We almost had a bunch of money taken. Well, actually, we did have a bunch of money taken from our account. But they did put it back quickly. Um, so that just kind of, just dealing with that whole thing, just kind of threw us off. So we had a payday. My husband was home. I had just gotten back from New York. We did not pull out cash. And it's all downhill from there. So we didn't do completely terrible, but we didn't do as good as I would have liked either for even really just this last week but it's okay. So you guys know I don't share all of my numbers with you. My husband has asked me not to share things like his income and, um, you know, how much our mortgage is and just some things like that. Now, I don't always cover it up completely. So perhaps you have seen it as, a, you know, in a brief flipping the page moment. And if that's the case, just, just ignore it. Don't say anything. Don't leave any comments about it. Um, we have reasons for not wanting to share everything. Um, and part of it is, you know, I don't have a ton of followers right or subscribers right now, but in the event that any of, you know, my family would see this, like there are s some members of our family that we just need to keep that information from um, for a variety of reasons that I'm not going to go into um, at this point in time. But anyways, so I had my March budget page. That was pretty decent. I do really like, let me back up to February. So you can see in February, I used these actual date covers. In March, I did not. And I like that better. You're also going to be able to see here, this was the payday where we did not pull, in, pull out cash. And you can see how crazy that was. Variety of reasons. One of which, it was a big snafu trying to get our accounts cleared up. We had hockey tournament this weekend. My husband got home the, on the 21st. I flew in the morning of the 22nd. Just just craziness. And, it, you know, when you have a hockey game at, let's say, 8 o'clock and another one at noon, there's not really enough time to go. We live, you know, 20 minutes out of town. Not really enough time to go home and eat. So anyways, it just, we spent more money than I would, would have liked. Um, but we knew that was going to happen because of the hockey tournament. So it's okay. But the, the biggest regret that I have is just that we didn't pull out cash. Because then I had to go through the app and just track everything this way. And it's it's just a pain. I, I don't like doing that if we can avoid it. So I haven't done my check-ins yet. That'll come later. Since we didn't pull out cash, I ended up having a lot more um, transactions to put in my spending tracker. So I don't really have enough room. But paycheck budgets went pretty well. So all in all, I guess, you know, it could have been worse and it, it, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. We definitely learned some things and um you know it's gonna be okay so let me show you what I am using for my April budget kit I have this kit from caffeinated Kate so let's see I've shown you guys this in a haul video already and you guys know I accidentally ordered two spending trackers so that's going to kind of be a little bit of a pain but I'm going to make it work I should have ordered two sinking funds because it was really that thin washi that I was looking for it would be really nice if Kate offered just like a sheet of thin washi so that we could have it for decorative purposes if we wanted to I don't know if she's planning to do that but maybe I will 
mention that to her. I do know she's coming out with the weekly check-in pages or stickers. Um, I think, I think in June. So that's going to be really great. So I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit. So this will be easier for you to see. So anyways, I love Kate's stickers. I really just love the way that they're working for me. Um, you know, I have pretty much always been a pen and paper gal when it comes to budgeting. We have tried some electronic budgeting. I think we tried, uh, what's, what's Dave Ramsey's one called? Like every dollar, I think. Sorry, I was trying to remember what it was called. Every dollar. And we've tried that. Um, we did use YNAB for about a year. Mm -mm off and on for a year. That one, I, I just couldn't, I don't know. I know it works for a lot of people. Oh man, it's going to be that kind of day. And I'm really glad that it works for so many people. It's just, maybe it's just because I truly am a pen and paper gal at heart. I don't know. But this seems to be working. Um, I'm able, you know, sometimes my husband is at work when we need to figure out, you know, what we're paying with our paycheck budgets and whatnot. So I just usually do some work ahead of time to get this ready. And then I just send him a picture. And usually he'll be looking at it on his iPad and then using his phone to FaceTime me or, you know, whatever it is that we have to do. So it works out pretty nicely. I mean, even though it's not an electronic version, it's working well. And for me, I am more apt to use it regularly if it's cute. I know that is, it doesn't even make sense. I know that. But the thing with budgeting is you have to do what works. And if this is what works for you, then you do it because having a working budget is very important. So I'm just going to make sure I have enough lines here. So we track my husband's job. Then we track his retirement. And then I'm just going to do, I'm not, I don't think I'm working at all the month of April. But I am going to put a line for variable income. We don't have a ton of variable income, but sometimes I'll do like an embroidery order for someone or sometimes like one of the kids will pay us um, for something. Maybe, I don't know. So usually I don't need to track that because usually if they're giving us money, it's just for something that we bought for them or whatever. Um, sometimes we have like a reimbursement from our whole school, homeschool group for something that we had already paid. That's not gonna line up exactly. Um, so anyways, just kind of things like that. Like, you know, I don't really have a ton of variable income at this point. Maybe someday I will, but right now we don't. Um, but I just kind of want, <sighs> why is that not lining up? I feel like I'm putting it just as close as the other one. Let's see. It's really okay if it doesn't line up exactly. I'm not that much of a perfectionist, but you know. Okay, so there's that. And then I break up my budget into fixed expenses and those are things like um, things that wouldn't change like if my husband were to lose his job tomorrow these bills would still have to get paid like my variable expenses I consider to be bills that if he were to lose his job tomorrow I would have to call and change some things. So that is how I break those things up. And, and usually we have, like, maybe we'll have more 
like variable expenses than we do fixed expenses or vice versa. So if that happens, then I'll just go ahead and write it over here. But I forgot to take my little cheat sheet up. Here we go. I made a little cheat sheet when I was doing some of my um, pre-planning to get ready for this so that I would know how many lines I need. Uh, where did I write this one? So I need 15 lines for my fixed expenses. So that would put me about right there. So let's see. Let's do this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to go ahead. Give myself one extra. Just, just in case. So I have changed some things. Which is why if you watched my budget last month or well this month for March, you would notice that my budget page went all the almost all the way down to the bottom. So what I've done, I need to get my ruler here and see see how this is going to line up. I don't know why I can't line anything up. Maybe I need to start by making some little. Well, I guess it'll be okay. That's not terrible. So I've made some changes. Um, and you'll see kind of what I'm talking about as we as we progress. But some things just didn't really make sense the way that we're doing it. So I did kind of change some things that hopefully will, will work out nicely. And if it doesn't, then when we do May's budget, we'll just go back to how we were doing it. Because that's the beauty about budgeting is if something doesn't work, try something different until you find out what does work for you. That's the, the, the really important part is finding something that works for you. So I don't usually use these totals. And then the balance down here, I don't really even know, like, what's that balance one for? If you guys have any ideas, let me know. But what I am going to do is put this totals button, or totals button, total strip down here, because then I can add the two together, the variable and the fixed expenses, and go from there. And... Maybe I won't like this. Maybe I'll be like, that's stupid. I'm not going to do that again. Who knows? So let's go ahead and draw some lines in here and get this set up. I really love the colors from this kit. It's so pretty. Kate's been making some changes um, to her kits, I think can't remember if any of them start in May, but I know in June she's, oh, actually, yes, in May her um, bill due stickers are different. They won't be taking up as much room, which is really exciting to me because it will just leave more room in each box for actual tracking if you track your spending that way. So I'm looking forward to trying that. I haven't ordered May's kit yet. Um, I'll probably do that next week. So I'm going to make sure that I get two. Actually, I don't even know if I'll need to get two because usually I have to get two um, sheets of bill due stickers. But I might not have to now that she's made them smaller because it might come with more on each sheet, which would be pretty exciting. So I'm, I'm just happy to see the changes that she's making. I love her kits now, but, um, you know, making them a little bit more user-friendly and, you know, adding more 
options is always a great idea because like I've said a thousand times, you know, what works for me might not work for you. This is right now. So I'm anxious to see that. I'm almost done with my lines. Okay, so I have my tables set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these out for you guys. So my first one's gonna be my mortgage. I might not fill all of them out, just a few, so you can at least kind of see the types of things that I put in here. My car payment, which we're getting pretty close to being done paying for that, so that's exciting. Car insurance. And we also pay my daughter that's in nursing school, we pay her car insurance for her as well. And I have my electric bill. I am gonna go ahead and put how much this is just because I live in Alaska and I think it might be kind of interesting for you guys to see. And I will say that um, this winter, I'm not sure why, but we have had the lowest electric bills we've ever had in the winter. Which is great. I mean, we have had, you know, $400 electric bills in the winter. And that's just electricity. That's not heat. But I think this year, this winter, my highest bill was like $278, which is great. Some of these are debt payments. I don't list them out under debt payments specifically. I just put them under a fixed expense because they'll still need to be paid even if my husband were to lose his job, even though I know Dave Ramsey says, you know, to keep track of, or to pay your four walls first. And obviously we would do that if anything ever happened. Not that I expect it to, but sometimes it happens when you least expect it, right? Two of these cards we're going to pay off in April, I think. I'm hoping it works like that. I guess I didn't leave myself any extra room. Because I forgot one on my cheat sheet list there. Oh well. So now under variable expenses, I would put our donations... because those obviously could change if we needed them to. Cell phone bill. Internet, because obviously we, I should put how much this is because you guys would probably die about that. We pay $175 a month for internet. Now it is unlimited, but um, it didn't, we pay for the unlimited package because there's so many of us, but yeah, it's crazy. I know. I hate that we have to pay that much, but it is what it is. Okay. So here is one of my big changes. So in my March budget, you'll see that I have listed out like DirecTV, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, math. Um, I pay for a math subscription for my kids homeschooling, iCloud, Ipsy, things like that. And that takes up a lot of lines, which is a little obnoxious. So what I have decided to do is I'm just going to call it subscriptions. And I'm just going to give it one amount. And then when I do my my monthly budget where I, or my, my monthly view where I lay out all of these stickers, the bill due stickers, then all of the items that are in subscriptions will have, it, it, it's, its own sticker in the monthly view. So I have to figure out exactly how much that amount is. And then another thing that I'm going to do, and this is kind of sinking fund style, but I'm still gonna include it in subscriptions, is um, Amazon Prime. 
I had that listed on my, let's see if I can find it, which I never actually did finish this. Well, I guess it's fine. So I had it listed right here. I knew exactly the date, the date that it was going to come out, which was March 15th. But guess what? When I did my March budget, I did not look at this. So that was kind of foolish of me. But anyways, we had the money to pay it, so it was okay. But I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 12 along with the Barnes & Noble membership as well. And that will be included in my subscriptions amount right here. But um, I'll probably move that to a different account so it's not in our joint checking. I don't know. I don't have that quite figured out yet. So that's one of the changes that you'll see here. And then I'm also going to put sinking funds right here. Even though we're not fully funding our sinking funds right now for a variety of reasons. But there's a few that we need to fund. Um, I think we'll probably just fund beauty, pet, and medical bills. We don't pay a ton in medical, but um, last year we reached our max out of pocket, I think in like February or March because my husband had surgery. And we're not that far away from our max out of pocket right now, but the biggest difference is like for most of the year last year, we didn't have to pay any co-pays for prescriptions, which they're not that much. I mean, we're very blessed with good insurance. I think we... Maybe we pay like $5 for some of our prescriptions, 2 or $3 for others. So I don't have anything to complain about, but I still want to make sure that I have a medical bills category um, in sinking funds. Another thing is like today we were going through some mail and found a bill from when my middle daughter had moved out for a period of time and didn't live at home. I mean, it was probably like two years ago, um, and it was only like $39, but I didn't even really know that she had it, and it had went to collections, so we ended up having to pay that for her. Um, so anyways, that being said, I want to have, there's a few sinking funds that we need to have, even if we're not funding all of them right now. So next, we're going to have groceries, gas. weekend fun, which will probably be a little higher than normal because my husband is still home. If you guys remember, he's changed his schedule. So now he's on a, he goes to work for four weeks and then he's home for two. So he still has one more week at home. So this weekend will probably cost us a little bit more than what we would normally spend. And that's okay because then the next four weekends he'll be gone. So we won't spend anywhere near as much. Um, we give my two college girls an allowance every month. And then my money. I'm not sure if my husband's going to take any money or not. This is all that I'm putting in for right now. I know we have a few other things. Um, well, one of the things is we're buying a dirt bike for my youngest daughter, which I know we don't need to talk about this. I know it's kind of foolish. Like that dirt bike could buy new garage doors, which we need to do because we are planning to sell next year. Anyways, it is what it is. That's what we're getting her. Um, so there's a few things like that that will have to be added here. We also have to buy some plane tickets for Denver and you know, just some things like that, but I don't have all of, I need to talk with my husband about that. So this is my budget page. This is pretty simple. Um, I think that that this is a good starting point. Even if you're new to budgeting, I'm going to attempt to zoom you guys out a little bit. There we go. So anyways, this would be a good starting point. If you're new to budgeting, start there. I'm going to leave that. The next thing I'm going to do is, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I keep having to kind of reach behind me a little bit. I'm, um, I took pictures of my March budget pages on my iPad, and I've got that on the stand behind me so that I can 
not have to keep flip, flipping back to see what I've done. And so if you keep seeing me flip behind me, that's what that is. I'm trying to make sure I should have set my iPad to not go to sleep, but I didn't. So anyways, okay. I just love these colors. They're so pretty. So I like to put my April or my monthly sticker there. I'm going to open this back up now. I've really been thinking about whether or not I'm going to stick with the neutral next for next year. Um, I think I'm going to. I actually think when I get my new life planner, which will probably be like in, well, I think they come out in May. But let's be honest, I live in Alaska, so I'm going to order it as soon as they come out. But... I'm probably not going to get it until June because Erin Condren, they always ship stuff out pretty quickly. I don't have any complaints about that. My only complaint is the method of shipping that they use for Alaska. It's like slow boat to freaking China or something. So annoying. They use like, and they probably use it for you guys in the lower 48 too, like smart post or something like that. But it's just like the absolute slowest method that you could ever use to ship to Alaska. So, but it's okay. We make it work. I'm really, really, really glad that Kathleen and Kate's stickers are reusable like that. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do for my monthly. I am not going to go ahead and use these at this point. Um, I just don't. I don't, I don't want to clutter it up so much. So what I am going to do is I'm, I'm not going to fill, put all of these out right now because it would bore you guys to absolute freaking tears. But I'm going to show you. So there's the auto pay and then there's just the regular checkbox. Now for May, I think they only take up one rectangle. Whereas you can see the stickers too. So they're essentially half the size. So I am super freaking excited about the changes. I'm going to put this one down. This is our RV, and that comes out, I think, on Tuesday. So one of the other things I'm going to tell you guys, I should have already mentioned this, but I didn't. So let me go back to March. So you can see I have the 29th marked as a payday. And it is because payday is actually the first, but our bank pays us a business day early. So if our if you're supposed to get paid on the first, then the 29th is yes, because the first is a Monday, so we'll get paid on Friday. So I have it marked as a payday on the 29th because that's when payday actually is. However, it's our April. It's, it, I'm counting it as an April income. Um, so I know that kind of gets a little fuzzy, especially because I have like these few bills right here and then it's a weekend and that will come out of this paycheck for a variety of reasons. I try not to do that if I can help it, but I'm going to have to do that this time and it's okay. It's still going to be just fine. So like I said, I've told you guys a bazillion times, you have to do what works for you and not what works for other people. So here is an example of the, one of the changes that I told you guys I made is I lumped all of this stuff into a subscriptions line in my monthly budget. But now I'm actually going to, Ipsy will come out on the first, so I'm actually going to put that that bill due sticker right there on the first. So I'm going to break up my subscriptions in my monthly view. I just don't have it broke up here in my monthly overview budget, um, which is fine because we do paycheck budgets. So it's, it's totally okay. So let's see if there's another one that I could show you guys rather quickly. Okay. Epidemic sound. This is what my husband uses. I haven't tried to use it yet. I need to look into it to see if we can use it for with two logins. 
because he uses it for his YouTube stuff. I think that comes out on the fifth. That's another one that's that's included in my subscriptions line. Mm, so I think that you guys get the idea. So I don't need to do all of these right now for you guys to, to see, but you get the idea. So the next thing I'm going to do is, oh, one thing. Tell me what you guys use this for. Like what, I've been just using it for kind of like some goals for the month. And I think I saw, like right here, which actually I couldn't do this one. I had to wait a little bit. I think I get to do that now. Uh, I probably did not have very many no spend days. Probably a couple. I didn't mark them. I should have. And I did this. And I've tracked my spending. So, not terrible. So, I just have been using it for some financial goals. But what else do you guys use it for? I was thinking, I think I saw somebody list all of their debts over here that they're working on. But I kind of have that done back here. I just don't show you guys because it's not really very organized. I mean, it's kind of, let's see if I can find one, like sloppy. Um, but if you guys have any ideas of other stuff that I could track here, then, you know, please go ahead and leave me a comment below so that I can see your ideas. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is this page would be my weekly check-in. So I did film a, actually, Let's do my spending tracker first so I can figure this out. I did film a weekly check-in video for you guys um, for weeks one and two, and I think that went pretty well. If you guys like to see that kind of stuff, let me know. I just don't want to, you know, share stuff that you guys don't really care about or that's not interesting or helpful to people. So if, if what I'm doing isn't helpful then I don't want to do it. So if you guys like the weekly check-ins, let me know. I think they're helpful to me personally to do, um, but I don't know if you guys really care about watching that or not. So here's my spending tracker sticker. Oops. And then I'm going to put my date. I don't really need that method sticker on there. I've been thinking about just cutting it off, but I haven't done that yet. I'm just gonna leave it for now and we'll see. I usually just overlap it a little bit with the, the thick washi just so it lines up right on this. And the only other thing that we have is this totals, which I'm gonna put that totals over here like I did right here for March, and then that left me this room for paycheck budget, this paycheck budget, and this paycheck budget. So that worked fairly well. It's, if we had pulled out cash, it would have been perfect, except, you know, we already talked about that and we failed pretty epically at that. So I'm not going to use this totals quite yet. I'm just going to stick it over here so that I have that set aside for when I need it. Um, I will go ahead and draw my lines. Now, the only thing that I track over here, and I've talked about this before as well, I don't track my cash spending. If I pull out cash for groceries, it's in my grocery category. I don't really care, and my husband doesn't really care, if we spend... $14.31 at Walmart, and then we spend another $125 at Fred Meyer. Like, that doesn't really matter to us. If we pull out cash for groceries, then it get, and we know it's going to get spent for groceries, then that's good enough for us. So, I might, like, write, um, let's see, how, how, could I explain this? Let me look back at March's. So you'll see, okay, grocery. I pulled out cash, $200 for groceries this day. And I wrote, don't count this in my spending. 
over here because I did go ahead and put, if I went to Safeway for groceries, if I went to groceries over here, I did go ahead and put that like that. So I note, notated that I took out the $200 in cash here, but then I didn't actually count it in anything because I had already done it over here. But I don't always do that. If I take out cash, sometimes I just mark it over here so I know I took it and then I don't use these stickers over here. So however you choose to do it is fine. Um, pretty much the only thing that I put over here in my spending tracker, because I track my day-to-day -day spending pretty much in my monthly view, is if it is something like if I pull out our weekend fund money, if I have in our paycheck budget, like this in March, we had to kind of last minute, um, I decided to go to New York to visit my family and my daughter at school. So we kind of had to figure out how, where that money was going to come from. So it wasn't in our monthly budget, but it was in our paycheck budgets. So I transferred it to an account that I have. So I'll put something here. If we transfer to savings, I'll put that over here. If we have an unbudgeted item, I'll put that over here. So some of the things that you see here, like travel money, I don't put it as unbudgeted because it really was budgeted when we did our paycheck budgets. It just wasn't in our monthly overview. And that's okay. And then... If it were a perfect world, I would go back over here and then, and I did this one, but I'll probably have to wipe that out and change it because I think it's a little off. Um, there would be an appropriate category over here for that spending to go in. Now, if it is something, let me give you an example, that we purchased that we didn't even have in our um, weekly budget, then that goes over here as an unbudgeted. And here's an example it would be, we had our hard pack removed from our driveway. Um, and hard pack is just, I guess I didn't realize that people don't know what hard pack is, but a couple of people have asked me. It's um, just snow. Like in Alaska, our snow doesn't, we don't have freeze thaw. So pretty much once it, once it snows, it stays for, you know, five or six months or whatever. So it gets packed down. And I do have a plow guy, but he doesn't come like every time it snows. I just We'll usually have him come like after it snowed a couple times. So we do end up with some hard pack in our driveways and the amount of mud is absolutely insane. Most people here don't have paved driveways because it's so expensive. So we have a dirt driveway. We, a lot of people live on dirt roads. So anyways, that was an item that was unbudgeted because we had never done it before, and then we thought it was going to be really expensive. I found out that it wasn't, and we decided it was worth $112.50 to have the guy come. But it was unbudgeted because we actually didn't even have it in our paycheck budget. So what I ended up doing was I had budgeted $200 to pay for um, Benjamin Spring League, and I didn't pay it. I just put this little arrow to mean that we were gonna to have to pay that later because it, it didn't need to be paid by then, so it was totally okay. So that, anyways, that's how we how we worked that. So that being said, now it is time to do the weekly check-in. I'm excited to see what Kate's gonna end up doing for, I think I said it was June. Okay, so this is what I'm going to have to think about for a second here because I usually use, I'll have to use this one. In getting the two sinking funds, I usually have extra of these thin washies and that is how I am able to do my transaction log. So did I not get a transaction log? No, I didn't. Hmm. Okay, let me read this for a second. Nope, I did not get a transaction log. Well, that's not just fan freaking tastic. Okay, well, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna use this thick washi up here, because we're gonna make this work. So now I'm going to do 
check in. Then we'll do category. Then we'll do spent. and available. I'm going to go ahead and draw this line. So I have been tracking groceries, gas, weekend fun, my money, and unbudgeted. So I think it was in January. Let's see. I tracked household in January, but I didn't track my spending money because that was kind of a new thing that we added. In February, I tracked household. And then in March, I didn't track household, and that's because we had tracked um, Angie's money. But the thing is, is we had some expenses for household. Like, let's see, what does my thing say? Household is green. So I had ordered some cleaning cloths from H2O. Oh, we had to go to Lowe's and get a new water filter for the fridge. And then we had some stuff at Amazon that we ended up getting that we like laundry soap and stuff like that, that our household so I almost want to see if I can put household tracking back in here. So let me see how many weeks I'll have to track for um, April. So this one goes to the 28th. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, And then this is going to be into May. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think I might can make it work. Okay, let's try. So I'm going to draw my lines at first. I don't usually do that, but I'm going to try that this time. Okay, I wonder how it's going to mess up this, but let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to figure this out as we go here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna put this thin washi. I don't know, maybe after I track household this month, maybe we'll decide that we don't really need to do that because like when I go to the grocery store, if I buy paper towels, I take it from my grocery budget. But if I buy paper towels from Amazon, like using subscribe and save or whatever, then I just count it towards household because I also get like vitamins and stuff from Amazon. And I don't really want my vitamins to come out of my grocery budget all the time, but I don't know. I guess it kind of doesn't really make sense to do it like that because there's no continuity. So maybe I'll have to think about that. Ideally, I would just have like a, I would have different categories for each, but I don't want to get bogged down by having 85,000 different categories if I don't really need them because sometimes it's really difficult to stay on top of that. So, this is usually how I will label like week one 
and it has, has always worked out fine because I only had five lines. So I don't know if I'm going to keep these stickers there, but I'm going to go ahead and put them down for now and then we'll see. I keep saying I just need to learn how to make stickers. I do have a silhouette and I also have Cricut Maker. So I could do it. I don't have any sticker paper right now, but I could buy some and just learn how to make like if there's just like one or two stickers that I'm needing, I could just make it myself. However, like I could make one that says weekly check-in, but I haven't done that yet. So anyways, here's my weekly check-in page. We're going to go ahead and try this and see how it works out. I like the way it looks. I'm hoping it'll be fine. We've done the spending tracker. Okay, so this is what is next. And this is where... Let me count how many. Okay, so this is where I would start my paycheck budgets. I didn't have, let me go back to my March page so you can see. I We had a lot of things that we had to take care of in this paycheck that we don't normally have to, but and that caused me to not have enough room here. So I think I'm only going to need totals and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then the title, like bills and expenses, title. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put this right here. That will give me a little bit of extra room couple lines extra at least in my spending tracker if I need it and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw out my first paycheck budget for you guys now really if you get paid anything other than pretty much monthly or if you have if you're a month ahead on your bills, then you can just go ahead and on the first of every month, sit down and pay all of your bills. However, many people are not like that, including us. I mean, we probably could pay all of our bills on the first month if we absolutely had to, but we choose not to. So I'm going to label this paycheck budget number one. I'm going to use this little, where is it? Somewhere there, oh, here it is. This little income sticker, which is cute, right here. And then when I know exactly how much we got paid, which I think I already kind of have an idea, because this one pretty much, this paycheck doesn't typically change too, too much. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. Possibly if I can line this up here. And then I'm going to just start drawing my table. So how I do that is I will just label this bills slash expenses. Then I will have a little spot for paid and then amount. And then I'll have two columns because that's typically how it works for us is we need two, not always, but I usually just use two columns anyways when I'm drawing my table. And then paid and then amount. So now what we're going to do is just going to draw my lines. I'm not going to go quite all the way down because I want a line for totals.
and I do this for every paycheck that we get. Now, I don't do it if I get like, okay, so I did an embroidery order for someone, someone last week or the week, must have been two weeks ago. I made um, like a little layette gown and some burp cloths that were personalized for a baby that was being born into their family. And I think I made like 50 bucks. So I didn't actually add that money to our income. What I did was just added that to um, a little savings account that we had because we didn't need that money for anything. So I don't do it for quite every dollar that comes in, even though you totally could. So now I'm just gonna write total down here. And then I'll write total, I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I figure out what bills I'm gonna pay with each paycheck budget. So I don't have all of my bill due stickers for April laid out yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use March's since all of those bill due stickers. So just disregard all of my spending trackers and whatnot that I have. So if I know that this paycheck budget is gonna run from the first, and then I'm not gonna get paid again until the 14th, as an example, all of my bills that are due between the first and the 14th are gonna get put in my first paycheck budget. So like, I know I'm gonna have to pay Ipsy. I know I'm gonna have to pay my RV loan. I know I'm gonna have to pay Epidemic Sound. Um, whatever, I also know that like for us, we only have to make it to the fourth because we have a, a payday, which I should label those paydays right now while I'm thinking of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the first. I explained to you guys that we were really getting paid, you know, on the, whatever Friday is, the 29th or 28th or whatever, but it really is going to be counting as this day. And then we get paid on the 4th, and then we'll get paid again on the 18th, and then we'll get paid on the 30th, but that will really be May's paycheck, so I'll just probably go ahead and put it like that for right now. Or maybe I'll just go ahead and put it on the 1st, even though I know it's going to come on the 30th. But that just will... Yeah, we'll just do that. So, so when I do my first paycheck budget, I need to get from here, because we're getting it on Friday, so I'm going to pay these three bills. And I'm going to pay all the bills that are due here on that first paycheck. Then the but but it can't it can't end there. The next thing that I need to do is I need to estimate what my income is going to be on this payday and make sure that I can make it all the way till this payday and pay all of those bills. If for example, you know you have a lot of bills due like right here and you think it's going to be more than your paycheck here, but you had money left over from this paycheck, then you better pay some of these bills too. If that makes sense. And that was probably part of why um, YNAB, one of the reasons why YNAB didn't quite work so well, you need a budget, is because, like, they don't want you to forecast. They just want you to look at whatever bills that you have and pay before your next pay, before your next payday and pay all of them. Except that's fine, but, like, what if your mortgage payment is due right here? And your car payment is due right here, and you have to have groceries, and this was a small paycheck but you had money left from here and you said, oh, well, I had extra money, so I'm gonna go, you know, spend $300 at Costco on things that we don't really need. Well, maybe you would have needed that money here. So you kind of do have to forecast when you're doing your budget, you kind of have to have an estimate of what your paychecks are gonna be so that you know if you have, you know, some overtime on this first paycheck, doesn't mean that you can just blow it on whatever you want just because you have another paycheck coming on you know, the 4th or the 5th, you need to make sure that your paycheck on the 4th or the 5th is going to be big enough to get you until your next paycheck. And if it's not, then whatever money you had left on the 1st, you need to put towards that, if that makes sense, if you're trying to avoid credit card debt especially. 
So my kitties. So anyways, that is how I do my paycheck budgets. If you guys have any questions about my paycheck budgets, then please do go ahead and leave them down below. The next thing we're going to do, and this is the last thing, and then my um, budget pages are done for the month of April, is we're going to set up sinking funds. Now, I haven't finished them yet because the month isn't quite over. And, like, I'm glad that I hadn't already done them thinking we wouldn't spend any more money because I did end up having to pay a medical bill today. So, these are pretty easy to set up, especially when you have... Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is going to work fine. So, especially when you have Kate's kits, they're just... I just love them. So let me flip this around. I'm going to go ahead and put the thick washi up here. If I can get it on nice and straight, that would be fantastic. I'm going to label it sinking funds. We will eventually get to the point where all of our sinking funds are... Um, funded, but we're not there quite yet. And then my transaction log. I need to cover that flag up. Somebody had a really great idea to, because I, I said, I think in my last month's video, that Kate's flags are not quite big enough to cover up the whole flag, which would be nice if they wood and somebody gave me an idea to cover the flag with white out um, which is a great idea and I'm going to get some white out as soon as I go to town and I might try that for next month so oh, here's that So I'm going to put my fund sticker right here. Did you guys think it took you a little bit to get all of your sinking funds set up when you first started budget budgeting? It's a little frustrating because I'm like, oh man, I wish I just could have them all set up right now. And we, and part of it is because you just don't really think of all of the things that you're going to need in your sinking fund, I think, at the very beginning of when you're budgeting but it's just a little frustrating because I'm like okay I want them set up like already like I already want to have them funded <laughs> but it's a pipe dream it takes time and we're actually probably doing the best at budgeting that we're ever we've ever done we're making some headway on our bills we paid off you know like I think we did like 500 extra dollars to a credit card this month so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm definitely excited about the progress that we're making. My husband and I have been able to have budget meetings without like wanting to get a divorce when we're done, which I'm sad to say that that was our reality, but it was. So anyways, we're, we're doing well and I'm pretty happy with the progress that we've made. I don't like to call them budget meetings. We've tried calling them just like conversations. I don't know. What do you guys call your budget meetings if you have one? Like what, what do you call them? Something that doesn't have like a negative connotation to it would be great. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm like that. It's terrible. All right. So I'm drawing my lines and my transaction log. I'll tell you guys a funny thing. So when I was in New York, I left what we call our weekend fun money with my kids that were home so that they could still go like to the movies. I don't actually think they did go to the movies. They went to a hockey game. They went out to eat a couple times. Mm. I can't even remember everything that they did. But anyways, it was, oh darn it. 
slipped with my pen. It was Thursday night and my youngest daughter wanted to go to the movies with my middle daughter. And my son had went somewhere with one of his friends. So she asked him if, and he had the cash in his wallet, or the weekend fund cash was in his wallet. So she had asked him if she could have some of the weekend fun money to go to the movies. And his response was, no, because it's Thursday and Thursday is not a weekend. <laughs> oh my gosh, I like, laughed hysterically when she told me that. Now, I did give her some extra money. I just, um, he wasn't home so he couldn't give it to her. So I just, she called me in New York and I just, um, transferred it to her account so that she could go to the movies with my middle daughter. But he's very, um, I guess we'll call it analytical, <laughs> but it was pretty hysterical. Okay, so I think that is pretty much it. I'm not going to fill in my sinking funds right now. It's realistically going to be the same list. Um, we may add a couple more, but we're only funding a few this month. Um, just because that's just how it's going to have to be. So let's see. We have April budget, monthly spending tracker, and um, due dates. We have weekly check in, spending tracker. We also have paycheck budgets, and then this will be for May. So I think that is it for my budgets. I have one more thing I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I think I've told you guys before that I have something that I use for my cash um, spending. And I want to just go ahead and show you my wallet that I prefer, that I really like. So, and I've had two of these because, you know, my, my purse got stolen from my car. And of course, I had this wallet in aqua, but I went ahead and got it in black this time. So this is a wallet from 31. And it is called All About the Benjamins. I absolutely love this wallet. I think it might be like, I want to say $48, which isn't terrible. I feel like it's pretty decent quality. Some of my 31 stuff hasn't been really great, but this I've absolutely loved. I did order, um, you can get like a, a fob type thing, a uh, wrist strap that hooks on right here. And I really like that, but I had to order it because my... 31 lady didn't have it in stock. So I'll be getting that in a couple days. So the zipper is really nice. I really like it. So I'm going to actually, let me take out my license so I don't inadvertently show you anything that you don't need to see. So when you open the wallet, you have all of these, um, I need to clean it up for my trip too, all of these card slots right here. But you also have um, this where I keep my checkbook. I didn't used to keep my checkbook there, but I had an actual checkbook like cover, but that got stolen. So anyway, so there's that. And then you also have several, so you have your, your zipper for your change right here. You have cards, card slots here. I think there's four on each side. And then you also have this spot back here. So let me show you what I use for my cash dividers. And you have plenty of options. You can keep them here, you could keep one here, or you could keep them here. I break them up into a couple of spots. But what I use for my cash dividers, they are from a, an Etsy shop called A Time for Everything. And this is what they look like. So you can order um, custom labels. Um, I don't absolutely love this particular font. This is different than the first font that I got, but I couldn't remember and I didn't take the time to go back and look in my order to see, my previous order to see which ones that I had used. So you can also um, customize how many dividers that you get. You can get, I think, three, six, or nine. I'm pretty sure she even has some cash divider wallets and whatnot that you can order from her shop as well. But I just really like these 
these dividers right here. So what I do is like I have household, pet, miscellaneous, groceries, weekend fun, and then my money. And then at, at this point, this is this covers pretty much everything that I might need to take cash for. So these three here, I don't use them as often, but these are these ones are like the where the majority of my money goes. And I haven't pulled out cash yet because it's not payday. So I would just put groceries here. I would put weekend fun here and then whatever my money was here. And then it would go into the back of my wallet right here. And then I just store these that I don't use on a day-to-day -day basis. I just store them right here. I probably should flip it. I should probably put my ones up here that I use all the time and then put those back there. But this is just how I've done it and it works for me. So anyways, I just wanted to show you guys my setup and what my system is. And I will go ahead and leave a link down below for the Etsy shop, a time for everything. Um, and then this again is the all about the Benjamin's wallet from 31. I really love it. Um, I think that it would, it would work really well for most people. So I think that's it, you guys. If you have stuck along this for this entire journey of this video, then I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content, please do give me a thumbs up. Hit the red subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you guys stick around. I'm nearing my next goal, which is 200 subscribers. I'm really hoping I can get there very soon. And I do have a giveaway that I'm going to be doing in the near future, and you'll hear about that pretty soon. So share my channel with your friends if you have anybody who likes this kind of stuff. Hit the bell notification if you'd like to be notified when I upload new content. I will leave links down below to everything that I used in this video. Thanks you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye!